Hey everybody, we're back with the Earth Ascending podcast. I'm Dylan, aka HDM, Human Design Maven, and this is my co-host Kathy, Magic Kathy Official. And today we're talking about love through the lens of human design and through the eyes of the raves. So, what is love? That's a very good question, and actually the reason we wanted to create this podcast and talk about um, that very important topic that everyone probably is really inspired or like excited to learn about is because you helped me see love through a completely different lens, which I think is so important for also the context of this podcast, which is the rays of love, right? The raves. And so love, I feel like has a lot of different programs attached to it. And when we talk about all the programs and the structures and the mind control that has been happening, the programming around love um, is being dismantled moving forward to prepare the world for the race, you also have to shine a light on the topic of love and what true love actually is. So how do you bring that into the context of human design and something that I was really excited to hear about, even geometry? Geometry. Well, the thing about love is there are many different lenses that you can look at love through or that you can define love through. And the human design body graph is a beautiful tool for that because there are different kinds or different expressions of what we've labeled love. If you look at the heart center, you know, there's tri tribal love. There's this sharing of support, resources, food, pheromones, bodies, energy, that's all about the continuation of survival and the protection of the tribe. And that is the most basic kind of love in the sense that it's rooted in our need for survival. And this is actually where most people derive their, their, their sense of what love is and the love that, that we seek on a more homogenized level. And it's actually, when you speak about it in that way, it already feels like there's a limitation to it. Mm -hmm. So there's like a certain threshold of love and it's not unlimited. So we have to fight for it. We have to struggle. And even, you know, our concept of relationships, it's like one specific person, my soulmate, my twin flame, whatever you have, right? It's only one. And out of all the seven, eight billion people, I have to find the one. Like that's that, that sounds like a struggle. Yeah. It's, it's all rooted in survival. So yeah. it's a limited resource that we have to compete for, essentially. And so this is what drives you know, the beauty industry. This is what drives mm -hmm. countless industries in our world that are motivated by people looking to become the most competitive lover, essentially, mm -hmm. the most ideal mate, um, the most you know, likely to receive the guarantee of support and survival that tribal love promises. And tribal love, or the love of the heart center or the ego will center in human design, has a lot to do with contracts, it has a lot to do with the bargain. Mm -hmm. If you love me this way, I'll support your ego this way. If you stay with me forever, then I'll be faithful to you and, you know, uh, reinforce your concept of who you are on an egoic level. Mm. If you, you know, bring home the bacon, then I'll, you know, cook you dinner every night. And so there's a condition attached to it or like an agenda. It's like, it's a contractual yeah, agreement. A, yeah. We can even see that in, in what the bond of marriage is, mm. you know, people are sold this idea that marriage is an idealistic, or an idealized container for a, a love relationship. But when you really break it down and look at what the structure of it is, it's a contractual agreement that's created for tribal or survival or material benefit. And whenever we talk about something that's tribal in human design, it, the same is to say it's material or it's even financial because mm -hmm. you know money 
is the mirror of survival in today's world. If you have money, you're more likely to survive. You have more resources, you have more food, you have more shelter, you have more options mm. to be protected and to, con- to have that continuation of your survival. So when it comes to how our minds process the conditioning of the heart center, and we have about 63% of humanity that has open or undefined heart center, meaning that vast majority of humanity is deeply conditioned around Mm self-worth, around loving themselves and basing self-love on the validation they receive from others. Um, It has so much to do with basically what we, how we value ourselves. You know, Mm -hmm. can we garner that validation and value from someone else is basically the limiting factor of how much we can love ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's the limiting factor of how, in a lot of, in a lot of ways, how much, how many resources we can generate. These are all energetic dynamics that are connected. So there's one aspect of love, you know, there's like the most kind of base ancient kind of love and there's not saying that anything is wrong with any of this it's just about understanding the mechanics understanding that some people are built for tribal love but not everyone is and so if you're not one of those people you can spend a lifetime burning yourself out wasting money on things to try and make yourself feel or look more worthy of love in this uh you know tribal way and it's not taking you anywhere closer it's not taking you anywhere It's not taking you closer to yourself. It's not taking you closer to your ideal mate because the only way to really find your ideal partner in this life is through loving yourself first. Self-love is putting that resource of, of just spirit and energy into yourself, which puts you in alignment. Mm. And as I always say, love is a self-organizing system. So when you apply that love to yourself first, you self-organize yourself into alignment and that alignment takes you and brings you into contact geometrically speaking with the people that are most correct for you mm. you know and that can look so many different ways but that's really the basis of understanding that love is a geometry mm. ra used to say that you know his definition of love was a bird flying through space and that bird looks over and see that sees that there's another bird flying right beside it and yeah. they're on the same geometry. That's that serendipity of understanding that, you know, we all have a magnetic monopole, you know, this aspect of our design that's in our G center, whether that G center is defined or undefined or open, we all have a magnetic monopole. This is this aspect that's pulling us on our fractal line of, you could say our destiny, our path in life, where what our movement is through space in this lifetime in this body and the more that we're aligned to the trajectory that's programmed into that monopole from birth aka the less we resist what our true trajectory is by not trying to act like things or you know act ways that are not true true to us then we find ourselves coming into connection with forces and people and places that our love for us, our unique experience of love, our unique expression of love. And then we get more unique love in the world. And it's not just based on contracts and tribes and agreements and that limited, more finite expression of what love can be. I mean, yeah. And that even brings me to understanding love as simple as it sounds as creation energy right even in astrology it's venus right it's creation it's love it's it's money it's all of that but if we just solely see love as creation energy we understand that it also is the energy of source means that it also is the energy of expansion and i hate to break it to people but expansion doesn't just happen through everything is happy and love only right it's also through meeting people mingling vibrationally speaking with people that might feel challenging and like a struggle and so it's about these agreements 
beyond the contracts that you explained it's more like a soul agreement like why do i meet someone so a soulmate is not just someone that i love and you know marry and everything is happy and sunshine and unicorns it's also soulmates can be people that challenge you to grow and expand because that's an agreement that you have on a higher perspective beyond the physical world that we live in and i think that's also a big key point for people to understand even that connection can be love because it is love and expansion from a higher perspective and you are speaking about the the g center you are being pulled towards that patient at that person for a reason so everyone that we meet so to speak is a soulmate or a, a contract that we have in a higher realm and comes from a place of love and expansion that's at least how i would say it and it is geometry because it creates a new pattern in your life right it, it, it helps you evolve and grow after every single person that you've had contact with you are different you are changed that can even be sometimes someone you meet at the supermarket checkout whatever you are changed right mm -hmm. and that also feels like especially when speaking on triggers and that friction that can mm. come in relationship and what the greater purpose of it is if we look at the time period that we're in and the closing of this cycle of planning and in a sense the closing of many many cycles that have come before it you know our final quota here our final job before we move into the age of the sleeping phoenix and the raves is that we're cleaning up our solar plexus. You know, mm. we're clearing out all the gunk and the trauma and the past life memory blocks and, um, you know, the generational curses and all these basically thought loops or, you know, energy loops, just reoccurring patterns that don't mm. serve any greater purpose or expansion. And we're being brought into friction. We're being brought into even attraction with certain people because they represent in some way the solution or the unraveling of a loop a karmic loop that's, that's like trapped. purging it out and so we need to bring it to the surface which is not nice right if you try to hide something underneath the carpet for years and then it comes out and it's like rotten mm -hmm. you don't like it but it's like important because otherwise how to clean it up right yeah so that's another aspect and you know there's a lot of talk in the spiritual community of like or oh, is it a is it a karmic or is it a soulmate or is it a twin flame and i think a more constructive way to look at it is through this lens is you know maybe some of these connections are just helping us break these old trauma bonding patterns are helping us mm -hmm. purge out past life karma from our solar plexus are essentially allowing us to come into a more pure relationship with ourselves and sometimes the thing that stand in between us and ourselves are things that came from before this life or so early in our development that we need that other person to come in and be like the focal point to trigger it out and to purge it out so there's that kind of relation there's that kind of you know relating to people and there's the kind of relating that is a byproduct and kind of almost a reward from being in alignment with yourself mm -hmm. that comes when you know you've used for some people they were born that way maybe mm -hmm. or some people they had to you know work really hard for 30 years on themselves to get to a certain place but either way there are certain partnerships that have a certain sense of lightness mm -hmm. and ease and also creative potential that i think come as a as a as a kind of reflection of alignment so there's that kind of love and and then there's you know you know love also being defined through the human design system as a force that only attracts mm. you know it's the magnetism of the g center that pulls us literally towards our destiny whether that's a person a place uh, or many different person people or places so that magnetism can sometimes just pull us into connection with people because something new is meant to be born out of that relationship you know it's not even necessarily about the two people but it's a kind of love that gets catalyzed because those people have the right vessel or the right 
design, so to speak, uh, to bring something new into the world that the world needs. Yeah, I want to actually say, like, speak about that too, because something that I think is important to understand is when I bring in the astrology as well, it's the Venusian kind of love and then the Neptunian kind of love, which has a, has a lot to do with spirit. And that Venusian is a lot about desires and, you know, it's all about me and it's about the self-worth and the lack of it and all of that. And w most people think about love, just of, about like intimate relationships, people you have sex with and all of that. But love is creation, as I said. And yes, you can create a baby, but what you just described is it's more like our energy is a match and needs to fuse for a specific thing to be birthed yes but it doesn't have to be a baby all the time you know yeah. it, it's beyond that it's not limited to that only way of connecting to someone and being in a relationship uh, it, it actually will be so much different moving forward there will be those kinds of relationships obviously because the species wants to evolve as well but it's more about what can i birth with that person why are we meeting and mingling energetically speaking right and it doesn't have to be through sexual encounter it can be just by sitting next to each other our vibrations are fusing right now for a specific reason and that's where we can even look into synastry charts and you know human design uh, astrology all of that explains us what is the purpose and the real reason energetically speaking for us to meet and what are we meant to birth into the world mm -hmm. yeah and i think as we spoke of in the first episode how the laying down of, you know, the expectations that we've maybe conditioned to have about what something needs to be or how it has, you know, how we want it to happen or how we want it to feel is really imperative for this time in general, because mm -hmm. I do believe that how you do one thing is how you do anything. So if how you approach relationships, you know, a very core piece of, of existence for most people with a sense of no expectations or you know open expectations with the sense of curiosity with the sense of um not looking putting a label on it straight up you know i think that's the most important thing because we started with love has so many labels attached to it and i think most people attach a label onto someone they don't even know yet mm -hmm. like that's my twin flame that's my karmic whatever or that's you know my next person that i'm going to marry because they yeah it's because the ego or the mind needs it to be something um for ego purposes mm -hmm. for mental certainty okay so if i know who this person is then i know who i am mm -hmm. and then we're safe yeah because that's really you know what the mind is looking for in at any time and so it's also about understanding that 50% of the world right now is emotionally defined. They have a defined solar plexus center, mm -hmm. which means that these beings have no truth in the now. So statistically speaking, you're probably in an emotional relationship, which means there is no truth in the now. There's no possible way to conceptually arrive at what any of it means in the now. This isn't only something that's possible through living through the experience mm -hmm. of it, staying open, staying curious, staying brave about what bubbles up through the low point of the wave, you know, what the high point of the wave like catalyzes you to jump yeah. into, you know, there's so much more fun and playfulness to be had in suspending the need for certainty. Um, and that's where I think the new paradigm starts to filter in through empowered relationship because when two people come together you know it creates that that shared aura that in a sense is a higher bandwidth vehicle for source to come through mm -hmm. so the less resistance the less expectation the less um need for a certain thing you know certain objectives or yeah. certain expectations to be met the more free of a creative medium it is for the universe to work through. I mean, that it's basically couple. coming back to what we explained in the first episode, not letting the mind make it something. Like it, it's like purely being in the solar plexus energy and not 
letting the mind explain what is actually happening like you can you cannot explain emotions that's you know the best way to understand it it's like most people when they experience their emotional wave i know that from so many clients they just put a label on it they, they the mind tries to explain even the highs you know and then in relationships that's just a downfall because you make the high mean something and you make the low mean something and as you said it, it's like both not not it both trap you in a limited identity yeah. and then therefore you're limited in what can come after that because you basically said i've decided what this means i've decided who i am who i can be and what this moment can become after this and that's the whole crux of the transformation that we're going through on a global level is we're moving away from the mental paradigm mm. because it's too limited to continue the evolutionary process we will not be able to continue to evolve if we only live through our minds that's what's being asked of us that's why we have 50 percent of the population with defined solar plexus because that is ground zero for the evolution but if we're living if we're relating to our solar plexus only through our mind we're fighting the forces of the fates as ra would say the fates being these greater forces that turn the wheels of the cycles and you can't really fight those forces you can only break your body or your mind against them yeah. and so it's about being able to to know all that and also understand that your mind isn't just going to shut up and go away when you realize that you're going to have to stay with that curiosity stay with that passenger consciousness which is a hallmark of what human design offers is the ability to see what your mind is selling to you or bullying you into or trying to convince you of and not buy it you know yeah, the same thing why that, we meditate right? right we can just observe it and it's just a sensation it's like i always like to compare it with a smell you don't make the smell mean something about you when you smell it, when you pass by a perfume store or I don't know, a food food truck or whatever. It's it's not it doesn't define your life. Right. It just is blowing in the wind. It's a sensation. For that moment. Yeah. So I think that's where the greatest edge of responsibility for human beings is, honestly, in this moment, is to be able to witness the mind not buy into its story and to stay open and curious about what life what love what your emotions what the smell mm. next to you is offering in that moment and see that we can essentially jump timelines by staying in that space because when you lock on to something you give it a meaning and you tell yourself that that's what it means you've chosen a timeline you've yeah. chosen a limitation you've chosen a certain bandwidth that you must now live within and you've canceled out so many other ones. But if you stay in that more loose and fluid and more love oriented, open space, non-resistant space, you know, what's possible for your life, what's possible in a day, what's possible in an hour is essentially infinite. Yeah. And that's what, consciousness really wants it wants to explore the infinitude myriad potentials of being in form and you are serving the true purpose of even being alive by being in that space much more so than just trying to cover your ass and survive and mm. define who you are and find your life partner and lock it all down that's been done yeah the locking down obviously has been done <laughs> and so now it's kind of like how how can we continue to open up yeah not just the supermarkets and the restaurants again but ourselves and our hearts because that's the irony of the whole story that we've experienced over the last years and decades we all wanted to find love and the result of it that is for most people that we actually closed our hearts more than ever on the planet before which is also interesting because we are going towards the rave or the race of love right so it's like opening the hearts again and unlocking that and it it 
there's not just one key, one person that unlocks your heart. Even the race tell us that, like vibrationally speaking, we need a whole tribe really to unlock our hearts and not only one person can yeah meet all of our needs also in, in in terms of love and i think we can't be talking about love without addressing the dance between the masculine and the feminine mm. and how that primary you know principle of polarity is also under undergoing a great change And also acknowledging that there's so much baggage and expectation and, as we would say, conditioning mm. around what it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman, what we expect from the opposite sex or the same sex or the po other polarity in whatever relationship. And it's even here. We put a label on our frequency just because we have a male or a female body. We mm -hmm. think we are more male or more female, but internally it can be a whole different story. And at the end of the day, we have both energies inside of us anyway. So we are both. We are not just limited to the physical form that we have in terms of like putting a label on, again, I'm a man or I'm a woman. And these are energies that fluctuate daily, you know? Yeah. You know, if you're emotionally defined, you know, weekly, monthly. So there's just, again, more, um, less box, boxing ourselves in mm -hmm. to these identities. And I think why do people keep their hearts closed is because, you know, they, they just take the pain as almost like a punishment mm -hmm. for an incorrect decision or, mm -hmm. you know, what comes up in rela when relationship doesn't work out or expectations aren't met or, you know, the dreams that we had for that partner don't come to fruition, we shut down our heart because we fail to look at the deeper reason for that experience, you yeah. know? Instead of like asking, okay, what did it teach me? How did it help me grow and evolve and create a new version of myself that is evolved, right? So I have been expanding. So going back to what I said earlier, that means that there was a fusion of love through whatever experience in that relationship, but you expanded, you, you, you grew, right? And that, that was the whole reason. And sometimes after that reason of expansion, the relationship, the connection is not needed anymore. Like you need to move forward in order to expand beyond that. And so many people resist the flow of expansion in their life through relationships because they think they have to be with one person for forever. And a lot of people take that, basically that, um, the pain that comes up or like the seeming failure energy that comes up as, um, punishment basically. Yeah. I'm like jumping the tracks on this thought right now, but essentially they, They, they don't see that even the pain is a, is a kind of expansion. Yeah, that's, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, it, it's like you create or creation, expansion happens not just through sunshine, unicorns and rom uh, rainbows, basically, mm -hmm. like feeling good, mm -hmm. which so many people think only if I feel good, I'm aligned. That is not fully true, I would say, because also alignment can mean alignment to your growth, alignment to your creation, alignment to the next version of you. And sometimes you pray for something and in order to go there or get there, vibrationally speaking, you need to, what we said earlier, bring all the gunk up first. And chaos is one of the most creative energies in the universe, mm. if not the most. And so that's also another box that we are transcending is as beings that are moving out of a purely survival focused paradigm mm. is that when we're not just looking at survival as our main goal, we can embrace so much more seeming chaos on the journey towards mm. expansion on the journey towards becoming more of a soul in a body, you know, becoming, you know, welcoming more of our true self into the 3d, into the physical. And that renovation process of our inner self, to make room for our higher self 
is not always, it, it's never linear. It's never sensical. It's mm. never understood in the moment. It's always going to be something that, you know, like abstract circuitry and human design. You have to go through the whole experience mm. before you can look back and make sense of all of that. And then you're like, oh, wow, that's why mm. I was on the Nile River for four days having in you know crazy ascension yeah. symptoms and why nothing made sense at that time yeah. and you know it's like that's the level of again courage which means trust at the end of the day too that you don't have to understand now what this is all about mm -hmm. it's beyond the mind it's beyond labeling it and making it mean something and one thing that i actually wanted to bring into context from a human design perspective is the connection, and you can probably elaborate on that, between gate 51 and gate 25, because 51 mm. is shock, mm -hmm. and 25 is love and unifying with spirit. Mm -hmm. And so that unification, to go back to the G center, where gate 25 is, and to love and to your own connection and the portal, which is the heart center to source, comes most of the time through a shock. And you always said that to me, you know, when, or you taught it even in a class that when someone meets you with a gate 51, you are up for an initiation. And at first I was like, oh my gosh, I'm afraid, like what's going to happen, right? When I meet those people. But it is true that at every time it connects me or reconnects me with my truth, with true love. And it is not always happy. It's always a shock, but however that may look like. Yeah. And that's, that's the beauty of the unexpected nature of, of what true love is because essentially when we look at love as, as kind of a force and, you know, of the universe, it's through, through this lens of mm -hmm. the gate 25 and gate 51, it's a dormant potential, you know, it's a, it's a rock waiting to be you know hammered and discover that there's a geode inside you know it's even a sleeping phoenix and then all of a sudden it rises right it's through a shock you know yeah it's a it's a discovery process and that's the initial impetus for for life itself you know because the channel of initiation in a sense is the the first channel and then actually that's the funny thing love never makes sense because you cannot explain why you feel attracted to a person or, you know, why you enter a room and everything is calm and chill and easy. And then the shock happens when someone enters the room and you're like, fuck, what is it about that person? Like, it doesn't even make sense because you don't know anything, mm -hmm. right? But it's a vibrational thing. It's a fusion of energies that all of a sudden changes your own, your whole chemistry and you, you can't explain why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so what do we say about that? I mean, that it's beyond the mind, it, bringing it, us back to, to the raves. Right. <laughs> it's, it's kind of making me speechless because there's only so much that you can say about a mystical experience. Right. Yeah. And the 2551 is part of the mystical circuit, which is all about experiences and energies that bring us closer to a knowing of our place in the cosmos mm -hmm. you know and a knowing is not the same as a certainty mm -hmm. you know a knowing is more of a, an acoustic resonance with something that may be perceived or experienced as a thought form but more is a state of presence that reflects your alignment with the greater whole, mm. you know, the, the greater all. So, I mean, that's also kind of what all love is doing, you know, all these shocks, all these initiations, all these potential relationships, they're bringing us hopefully into a greater just acceptance of the context of, of life itself mm. and where we stand within that context And that opens another portal to like another adventure, another lifetime, you could say even in, in one lifetime or in a different body or whatever. So. And at the end of the day, it doesn't even matter 
that much from the perspective of source because it, it all comes back to the heart center. So either you meet someone and it's amazing and you expand together and you grow together and that leads you to open your heart or it's a catastrophe and it triggers you and it, it challenges you. But at the end of the day, it invites you. You don't have to, but it invites you to choose yourself again and open your heart towards yourself, not just to the world. So it's always a heart opening experience any kind of trigger in that sense uh, in form of love and a trigger can also be expansion and growing together like whenever someone comes into your life it's a trigger to activate something in you on a vibrational level so to speak mm -hmm. <laughs> it's also about especially with the 2551 but i think with this topic at large being able to come back to seeing how everything is working for you mm. and not against you. Mm. So whether it's a trigger or the romance of a lifetime or a hard to integrate experience or even a shock that feels traumatizing, um, it's about equipping ourselves with the ability to at least ask not necessarily need to get to the certainty immediately, but at least ask and open up that potential for ourselves. How is this happening for me, mm. not to me? And or, I feel like as as Capricorn moons, we, we can speak and probably write books about that because I always say that with my Capricorn moon, my like emotions are my greatest lesson. Like I've learned so much, but only if I sit there and I'm like, what are you teaching me here, pain? Like, what am I learning? Okay, another essay, tell me about it. You know, instead of meeting it with fear and contraction again, going back to that topic, to be like curious, like, okay, it's happening for me for a reason. So what am I here to learn? Mm -hmm. How can I expand? How can I grow? And to also understand in answering that question, there is an integration process mm -hmm. and we can't always get to the certainty of the answer in the moment when we have the you know chemical compounds rushing yeah. through our bloodstream that are keeping us in fight or flight or shock or and in the emotional dismay. wave <laughs> yeah or in the emotional yeah now so it's also about having that patience yeah. maybe not patience kind of but i just, would say trust really yeah, the yeah. willingness yeah. to know that I can feel completely triggered, unsafe, unseen, betrayed even, but that as I let that move through my physical system without resistance, I'm going to get closer and closer to coming to mm -hmm. an understanding or a knowing of how that was for me. Not that, not an experience that lodges me deeper into a victim identity. Mm. And that's something that the, the gene keys actually really teach us about this transitional time into the sleeping phoenix is it's the era of the, the dying off of the victim consciousness. Mm -hmm. Because anything that we do attract into our life is based either on a conscious or usually unconscious script that's, that's deep within us, that's deep within our consciousness or unconsciousness. And... It's all, it's all in service to bringing what is not aligned to light. Mm. And the more aware we become of the unconscious and the more that we're able to consciously and intentionally work with our unconscious to be a vehicle for creating more of what we want and less of situations that put us in, into victimhood, that's the evolution. That's the purging of the solar plexus. That's the clearing of you know, our, our bodily channels, essentially, for pure source to flow through, that's the pathway to having more of our spirit mm -hmm. consciously experiencing itself through the physical world. And that's, that's the job we're doing here. You know, that's the quota. So it's all tied back to this same idea, you know, no matter what the experience or the outer experience manifestation is it's all just showing you what's in the way mm. of you being all spirit you know not in an ungrounded whimsical way 
but in a way that we're just being shown everything that stands in the way of us receiving our full power as creators, as beings, our full awareness as beings, our full capacity as a consciousness. And that's the only time that anything is going to trigger you, mm. is to show you that it's not you. And not in a way that it's there to put you in a state of denial or repression or pushing it away, but that you take responsibility for what's in you that's not you, and that you work to purge that out. And the reward is that your life begins to flow with more and more effortlessness, grace, synchronicity, abundance, connection, all the things that we know are us because of the way they feel. Mm. We prefer these states because they're closer to our true nature as beings. We don't prefer these other states because they we know deep down on some even cellular level, that's not my true nature. No, I'm not resistance. built like this. Yeah. And so the more that we lean in, we'll lean out of the victimhood space and lean into taking responsibility for the the genetic lineage that we've been given whether it's you know so clean and clear and we're just like living avatar buddhas or it's just chock full of addiction and trauma and repression and darkness not judging that taking full responsibility not letting ourselves believe that we're a victim of one or the other I mean, you chose it for a reason, you know, you wanted to activate something. Mm -hmm. And for most people, I mean, if you if you've chosen a really hard upbringing, it means that your soul just wanted to have an accelerated path of growth. And that might sound more exciting than being like, I'm from a shitty family. But that's the truth behind it. It's really true. Like you needed a really intense trigger at the beginning of your life. Because otherwise you would have not come to, let's say, spirituality or a specific craft or whatever kept you in your room when you were a child and like helped you immerse yourself in a completely different world, right? Mm -hmm. Or learn about relationship dynamics or learn about specific things. It, it's like a trigger that you needed. And because you knew on a soul level you needed it, you designed it, right? So it, it's about understanding that you create everything for your own growth and expansion. Mm -hmm. It's all just showing us what's in the way of our full spiritual self coming into being. Mm -hmm. So that's the journey of love. And I love that's, that. <laughs> I love, I love that. <laughs> and that's our second episode yes. of Earth Ascending. Thank you for being with us.